The issue as to whether or not the U.S. is dealing with so-called rape culture keeps coming up, specifically because it seems like judges keep giving convicted rapists extremely light sentences, and in some cases, sentences that don't involve jail time at all. Now, the most recent instance involves uh, Judge Patrick Butler sentencing a convicted rapist to essentially no jail time. And this person is Austin Wilkerson, who uh, confessed to raping an unconscious girl and also apparently lied while he was in court. So Wilkerson's victim drank too much celebrating St. Patrick's Day and he told her friends that he'd take care of her. Instead, he isolated and raped the half-conscious victim, prosecutors said in court documents. Now, he did end up getting convicted of sexual assault of a helpless victim and unlawful sexual contact and faced a possible prison sentence of four years to life for the March 2014 attack on the freshman. But a judge in Boulder, Colorado on Wednesday sentenced him to two years on work release and 20 years probation. So for those who don't know what work release is, it essentially means that he's able to leave the jail during the daytime in order to go to work or to go to school. So I'm guessing that at night he has to report back to the jail, but he's also getting uh, 20 years of probation. And the judge is saying, no, 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 don't think that he's getting let off easy. In those 20 years, if he violates his probation, he could serve some time behind bars. Okay. Now, Wilkerson admitted to investigators he'd made advances to the victim that night, but that she rebuffed him each time and that he felt pissed off mm. and called her a fucking bitch. So why is it that the judge decided to give him such a light sentence? Well, here's a quote from Judge Patrick Butler. He says, I've struggled, to be quite frank, with the idea of do I put him in prison? I don't know that there's any great result for anybody. Mr. Wilkerson deserves to be punished, but I think we all need to find out whether he truly can or cannot be rehabilitated. So it's interesting because there seems to be this benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. given to certain convicted rapists and then other people from certain backgrounds, whether it's a lower socioeconomic status or a certain race, don't get that benefit of the doubt. They seem to get extremely harsh prison sentences, and the sentences are actually pretty harsh considering the crime. Like right now, we have more than 3,000 people serving life in prison without the chance of parole for nonviolent offenses. It's not rape, okay? It's not armed robbery. It's not murder. It's individuals who have gotten caught with possession of drugs or other nonviolent offenses. How do you justify not giving a convicted rapist time in prison? And you don't justify it. It's 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 such a grave injustice. And this case specifically is very wolf in sheep's clothing like because like you stated, this is a guy that presented himself as the good guy. Mm -hmm. He's at the party saying, oh, hey, this girl's drunk. I'm going to take her home. I'm going to make sure she's OK. He presented himself that way to her as well. Meanwhile, he goes and rapes her. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at the the police uh, reports, he changed his story multiple times when you talk to the police. So and this was over a period of months. So you never really saw him take accountability mm -hmm. or have remorse, even though his defense will, will, will say exactly the opposite. Just read the police reports and you'll see that this guy is pathological, that this guy is calculated, and it makes it even worse. And he's, he's not doing jail time for that, like real actual jail time. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. we could talk about privilege for hours, yeah. economic privilege, you know, racial privilege. Mm -hmm. I think what's even more important right now is the problem that's going on in this country, and that's rapists not being held accountable. Mm -hmm. But I think the other issue is, what is what about the victim? Right. This yep. woman was violated. She's got to live with that for the rest of her life, which means that's going to affect, you know, future relationships. It's going to yes. affect a lot of things that she does just on a daily basis. Like, it's going to be hard for her to trust another person to say that, she's gonna, you know, a person's gonna look out for her. Like, that this is gonna really just change uh, these women's worlds that okay. happen to them. And I feel like it's too much compassion for the actual right. person yep. that did it. Well, we don't wanna ruin his future. Well, you just, he just ruined someone else's. Right. right. So, like, what are we doing? Like, what are we talking about here? Yeah, and look, I'm not saying that we need to be more punitive in the way that we deal with people in our justice system. What I'm saying is there seems to be an inconsistency in the way that we sentence people. And there also yeah. seems to be um, this very dismissive attitude toward instances of rape. So, this is not in a vacuum. This is not an isolated incident. You guys know about Brock Turner, mm -hmm. who was a former Stanford University swimmer who also got convicted of rape, and he also got an incredibly light sentence, and people were outraged by it. But you should be outraged about all these stories that keep popping up, yeah. because 
it goes beyond these very specific cases. It sends a very strong message that, hey, you know what? As long as you have the ability to hire the best defense attorneys, and as long as you have the certain privileges that give you the benefit of the doubt, then you can probably get away with this. That's right? what's scary. That's the most damaging part, um, aside from what this poor girl is going through. But this judge, the message that he's sending is exactly what you said, to echo that. And on top of that, it's, it's creating more victims. Mm -hmm. Because he's saying rape is not a serious crime. Yeah. You, you don't need to, you're not going to go and serve jail time. Uh, marijuana offenses have jail yeah. time, but this doesn't. And then it's damaging for, for the young woman that doesn't get the justice. And then um, it's just this, 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 this revolving vicious cycle where this judge could put a stop to that and set a precedent but instead he, he chooses not to I feel like at this point I mean I know each state is can be governed by their own but I feel like it should be a federal mandate of of something to I mean you got the the black uh, football player in Tennessee who what seven years I believe it was or something mm -hmm, like that mm -hmm. and you got what's going on in California you got what's going on in Colorado can we get you know something on the federal level to say if this is an aggravated rape if this is a you know right the different types of rapes that may happen or what was going on in this situation, can there be a baseline so this can stop happening? Can we yeah, get a it's level, interesting. but then it's like, it's that's really, a whole other fight. It, that is an interesting proposal, but that oftentimes becomes an issue as well. So mm -hmm. right now, for instance, we have like mandatory minimums and right. mandatory minimums lead to people serving a ton of time for, you know, like nonviolent drug offenses. Mm -hmm. um, and so, look, I, I see what you're saying. I feel like that's something that tends to get abused and it tends to be something that's supported by private prison industries yeah. um, because they want to put people in prison as long as possible. I think it's important to give judges discretion. However, oftentimes you see judges, you know, not being consistent in their sentencing. And that's when you have to look into, you know, whether or not you can vote that judge out because a lot of yes. judges get elected, right? right. Yeah. Um, yeah, you and, can't fire a judge. Exactly. Yeah. So you got to get involved. You have mm -hmm. to get involved in politics in a local level as well. That's how powerful you are, and I think a lot of Americans don't realize that. By the way, I also want to present uh, one other angle of this story that's really important to mention, because there's an issue uh, with the way the laws are written in Colorado, and it pertains to those sentences that people get when they're convicted of rape. So let me give you the details on that. So the sexual assault count, a class three felony, carried a presumptive prison sentence of four to 12 years, but under Colorado law, the sex assault charge is subject to indeterminate sentencing, which means Wilkerson would not have been released from prison until he was deemed fit. So the judge apparently didn't want to give him that sentence because I guess he was concerned that he would end up in, in prison longer than he should have been in prison, right? But yeah. so if, right. if those are your two options, right. I, I don't know if I agree with giving him, you know, no prison time.